So we call these, these are, these, is, these are war machine models. These are 28 millimeter heroic. And the reason that they're heroic is because the 28 millimeter is supposed to be the scale that they compare to a human. Well, these are way bigger than what a human is actually at the 28 millimeter scale. And 28 millimeter heroic also kind of blows up certain features, like it makes their arms a little bigger, their features aren't exactly proportional to humans. And you might think, well, we want it to be realistic, but just look at like the Imperial Guard, that kind of stuff. They still look really good. It's just that they're better to paint because you know, there's more surface to cover uh, with paint. So that's the scale that we're going for. So we could, theoretically, if we did $20,000, I'd love to have two starter boxes. And heck, I'll even work extra hard to get a, better, a beta rule set out by the end of summer as well. And we'll have a beta rule set in two starter boxes. I would just die and go to heaven if we did that. Because I'm, just, I'm super excited for this. Now, are we going to raise $20,000? I don't know. $10,000 is our goal. But I have a funny feeling that we're going to be able to do more than that. Because we have a lot of people that are, that are excited about this. So, he'd like... Maybe not as excited as me, but I don't think anybody can be as excited as me for it. So, so far so good? Well, you have a funny feeling. And I'm funny looking. <laughs> don't I, give us any funny money. That's all. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so glad that you're part of this video. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. So, um, so yeah, we're going to be doing lots of fun stuff as well. We'll talk about it in a second. Now, I want to address a comment, and um, there's a comment on the mini wargaming site on that Dark Potential Needs Your Help video, and that was by Tada or Todd A, and he was saying that that's overpriced. I shouldn't. Uh, essentially, he was saying you should be able to get more done at ten thousand dollars in five miniatures. And then he got a bit of flack for that. There's a few negative down votes or down votes on his, um, a negative down vote would be an upvote, I guess. So he got a few down votes on that comment. And then he, re he wrote again a much larger comment saying, I can't believe I got down votes for saying that. And then he went on to talk about how what you do is you get a sculptor when they go to do, the, like they have their concept art and the sculptor, rather than just making one model, can make a bunch of different poses of that model or similar models just based on the same skeletal structure. And so you save a lot of your expense by doing that. I think that's a brilliant idea. And to be honest, I didn't think about that until you posted that comment. So thank you, Tade, or Tara. I never actually know how to say your name. So in the next comment, please tell me how to, because I see you post a lot. And so that, I think that's a great idea. And I'm going to try to do that. We're going to see how it works out. Um, but I'm going to try to squeeze every last bit of, of uh, result from this fundraising money. Let me put it this way. If it ends up only costing $1,000 to make a miniature, I'll make 10 with that $10,000. I'm not going to keep any of the extra. It's all going to go towards this miniature production because that's what it is for. I don't want any contributions not to go towards it. It might not go directly to miniature contribution all the time. It might go towards more of the artwork or the environmental art or the, the artwork for the rule book or for the logo or maybe we'll make a website. Uh, whatever. So, but the, f the first $10,000 is definitely going to be used to get those five miniatures done, which I know we can get it done within that budget. But I do agree with you. I think that's a great idea, and thank you for that. And I've actually heard that before, but for some reason it didn't really cross my mind. So, so once again, thank you. And don't worry about down votes. They don't actually do anything yet on our site, except, <laughs> except show a negative number. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. It's not like YouTube where like top comments are put up high and if you get enough negative down votes, it actually, like, your comment disappears. And none of that happens yet. Eventually, I'll do something with the up and down votes. Keep using them, because eventually there's going to be a bit of a karma system where you might be able to earn a vault membership or something. But anyway, that's completely off topic again. <laughs> Told you it's not supposed to be, like, a well-formulated video. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's like the opposite of my beat map bat reps. This is one long clip, rambling. And my beat map bat reps are like 600 short clips. Very concise. Anyways, it's a yin and a yang, I guess, within my own brain. Do you have any questions so far? You don't have to, but if do you? No. Nope. Any other stupid comments? Not yet. Okay. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, it makes me excited. All right. Hey, did you use my camera last? Why is the display not showing how much time I've been recording for? I, I don't think so. Maybe I hit a display button. Hold on. This is how informal this video is. I'm going to walk over here, still recording, and I'm going to hit 
display. There we are. I've been going for about 20 minutes. That's not very long at all. Really? Only 20 minutes? Yeah. Well, plus the time before I got interrupted. Uh. But that was only like five minutes. So maybe we've been going for almost 25 minutes. I know it seems longer, eh? Just to hear me ramble on forever. Okay. You mind if I drink some of your Kool-Aid? <laughs> very nice. He's painting the Signar, by the way. So. Mm -hmm. Should ha you'll have like your first 15 points painted in no time. Mm -hmm. Isn't it painted up nice and quick? Don't you love it? You're like, hey, I just painted an army in like two weeks. First one took forever because I had no idea what I was painting. I'm like, maybe this color, maybe this color. Oh, it looks terrible. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> so, um, I want to give you an update as well as what's going on. Right now, even though we haven't done the fundraiser yet, like I said, I've been putting money into this. Um, because we could put a bit of money into it. The, re the reason we need the fundraiser to begin with, if I haven't explained this already, is it's not that we don't have money to put into this, it's that we need to continue supporting the other parts of our business that are already going. Like for example, the vault has been growing tremendously, and so we needed to do something like hire somebody else to make content. And we actually have other people coming on board as well, hopefully pretty soon. And so we, we need that money to, to continue working with the stuff that already is obviously in our business. Um, or buy more stock for our warehouse and expand our product lines or uh, whatever else we need to do. And so I, I could go out and spend $10,000, but then all of a sudden we would be doing less content and that wouldn't be good. So we need to continue funding the, and investing in the parts of our business that are growing. And so this, by getting this uh, crowdfunding, it allows me to just kind of go all out with this without feeling the least bit guilty because I'm not pulling money away from something else which we don't really have to pull away from. So I don't want to have anything else suffer. I want to continue doing just as much content, if not more, than what we've been doing and growing those parts of the business as well. So, uh, but I have been putting some money into it. That's where I was kind of getting with this. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was getting somewhere. Uh, I've already put quite a bit of money into this, actually. So here, here's what we've done so far. And I'm going to tell you what we're currently working on. Uh, I've hired concept artists and environmental artists to do these things. We're not at any sculpting stage yet, although we're pretty close to one for the salvagers, ironically, even though I said that that wouldn't be one of the first ones. Um, there, and part of the reason that we're doing this art beforehand is because I need something to show when we're doing this whole campaign to raise money, because people will be more inspired as they see stuff. So, a lot of, and you know what, there's actually a lot of comments on the YouTube channel where they're like, I'd like to contribute, but I'd like to see the concept art first. And my response to them was, well, that kind of defeats the purpose. Because <laughs> I need the money to make the concept art. But I know what they mean. They want to see the style if it's something they're really interested in. You have, you have varying ranges of fanaticism to too many Wargaming and Too Dark, potentially. You've got those who are crazy, just crazy fanatic. And they spend a lot of time posting on the forums. They make their own concept art. They post stories. They're awesome. They, they, drive, they drive this forward because they just have so much creativity to, it, to lend to the project, so much more than I could have by myself. And you have the people who are vault members and who buy from our store every month and who just like want to contribute in every way possible. And then you have it all the way down to the people who think that we owe them something and are mad when we don't put out enough videos because we're putting videos into the vault and it's not fair for them to have to pay for them. And so, you, you know, you get, you get the whole range of people, the, the ones who just love everything we're doing and those who kind of, they like, the, they like watching the videos, but, you know, you do anything wrong and and they get on your case. And then you have everybody in between there as well. And so you're going to get these varying ranges of interest and dark potential as well, which is why you include the perks. If, if everybody was super fanatic, I wouldn't have to have perks. I'd say, just donate as much as you can. No perks. You just get to help. And obviously there wouldn't be very many people that would do that. There would be a few people who are crazy fanatical, and that would be it. So we have to make it. So the perks are really going to focus around pre-ordering the miniatures. And then once you get to the higher levels, to some fun stuff as well. So basically, you're helping pre-order the miniatures. It doesn't mean that what the perk level is is what we're going to be charging for the miniatures. For example, the $25 level gets you one miniature shipped anywhere in the world. Is that going to be representative of what a miniature will cost? I don't know, because you have to consider the shipping cost. For example, shipping overseas costs close to 10 bucks. And so when you take that $10 out of that $25, that leaves $15. Is $15 an outrageous cost for one model that's metal? Not particularly, but I don't know if that's what it's going to cost because I have no idea. I have a general idea, but I, have, I don't know what the, the end cost is going to be. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's kind of like pre-ordering, but you're contributing with a pre-order perk is what are, really what it is. And, so the, and pretty much every level except the $5 level gets miniatures. 
And so that'll be our first batch of miniatures will be out to the people who contributed. And then hopefully we'll have enough to stock up our shelves as well for those who want to purchase them when they first come out. It just depends on how many contributors we get. So where was I going? I was talking about something. I don't know. Oh yes, artwork. <laughs> so what we currently have in progress. <laughs> this cold is killing my brain. It's making it slow down. Um, anyway, so we've hired artists. Here's what we have going. I'm going to list off a few things. We have an artist who's working on environmental art. And what I mean by environmental art is he's drawing artwork or he's doing illustrations of the environment. So it's kind of like it gives you an idea of the feel of the game. So think of like cityscapes, street level shots of larger areas. He's already done two. I've shown a preview to one of them in the, on the forum uh, and in on my last video, uh, which was a space elevator in the back of a nondescript city. Uh, so you can't really tell by looking at it what city it is because it's not based on any city. And the second one that he's already finished, and I haven't posted yet, and I'm going to post later on, is a, a shot of London. It's actually that typical shot of looking at Big Ben down the street, and you're on this one street, and it's London in the post-apocalyptic era. And the third one that he's working on right now, and I'm most excited for, is actually going to have people in it. What it's going to be is it's going to be a shot in Toronto in the fall, so it's going to have like orange and yellow leaves rather than the greenery that's been on the other ones. It's going to have the CN Tower in the background to make it obvious that it's Toronto. And in the, in, in the background as well, like, or more like in the mid-ground, there's going to be salvagers picking up scrap and moving it around. There might even be like the big heavy loader salvager, just far enough away that you're not going to see details of them. They're more going to be outlines. And then in the foreground is going to be some sort of person, I'm not sure if they're going to be from any specific faction, looking away from the camera. So you're just going to see their back, and they might have some sort of like laser rifle or something strapped to their back. And, and they're kind of looking down where the salvagers are. Um, and, and that's going to be the next one, so I'm pretty excited for that one because it actually has, it's starting to add the, the, the actual factions into the picture, which is neat. The other ones were cool to get, but this is the next step. So hopefully that'll be done in time for the campaign as well because I'd like to release these throughout the campaign to kind of keep people interested. So that's the one guy. Then I have another guy who finished already the, the concept design for a scrapling, which is the smallest salvager unit. Um, it's about, I think it's going to end up being about probably half to two-thirds the size of a person in the scale of the miniatures. So basically it'll still be on a small base, just like this, but it'll be a little smaller than a person. Maybe. I'm not quite sure yet. The, the, obviously you can scale it up however you want, to a point. And he's done that, and now he's working on two more concepts for the salvagers. This is why I say it's ironic that I don't necessarily want them first. But the reason, I, I still want concept done for all five races. Even if I don't get miniatures done for all five, we'll still get concept work done for all of them because it's important um, to have the basic idea of what they look like. And so he's going to work on two more. One is going to be the heavy loader, where it's um, a transport vehicle. Um, not necessarily that it'll be used in game, but uh, it'll be a bigger miniature, or it'll be a, a bigger concept that's meant for the scraplings to be bringing stuff back. And then it'll also have a defense salvager. You know, something that's designed to actually protect the convoy and protect the salvagers while, or the scraplings while they're at work. So that'll hopefully be done in the next couple of weeks as well. Then I have somebody working on the Zlanthos. This has been the most challenging because it's hard to make an alien race from scratch that you have no idea what they look like. I can see... Uh, it's true. It is, yeah. Like it's, it's, we could go the easy route and just be like, they're reptilian. And boom, we got alligator men. Or, you know, and that might work in the long run. Uh, if you really look at most aliens, they usually resemble some sort of animal or insect. Uh, that's usually what they're based off of. Because, you know, what, what's our frame of reference for anything? It's what we've seen. Even the most crazy fantasy stuff that we have, you can kind of pull it back and say, yeah, that's just a big... Like, I'm looking over at the Magic the Gathering boxes, and there's that huge creature right there. But it's a worm with teeth. But it's fantastic. It's huge. But in the end, it's a worm with teeth. So it's all based on that. Or you take some humanoid shape and you slap on some makeup and you got a Star Trek alien. Um, well, it's true, because their budget back in the day they didn't have CG and stuff to do all these different aliens. And so their aliens were, hi, I'm a black guy with stuff stuck on my head. I'm a Klingon. Or you make me have pointy ears and a bull cut and I'm a Vulcan or a Romulan. Um, and that's all they would do. And as, as the seasons have gone on, they've become a little more adventurous with it. Uh, and then you get like Star Wars aliens, which are just all over the place because they actually did puppet work and stuff for the, for the movies. But it's different for a movie because you have a higher budget, right? So you have all these different ways to do aliens. And I'm, I'm not, we're still working on it. We've got some sort of middle ground right now where it is going to be humanoid because 
If I'm going to make them a major race, it's just too hard to have a wacky looking alien and take it seriously. So it's probably going to be humanoid, two legs, two arms, but it's going to, its features are going to start to vary from there. So it's been a big challenge going back and forth with the concept artist. He's come up with a lot of stuff, and a lot of stuff I've kind of said, no, I don't like the look at that, I don't like the look at that, I don't like the look at that. We just got the look of the body down, now we're looking on look, going for the look of the face. Um, and so hopefully we'll have his Lanthos concept done for during the campaign. And then I had somebody do a corporation one. I really didn't like it, so I didn't, I'm not going to hire them again. I'm not even going to bother showing the concept art that they did because it just looks not very good. It's not, I, I'm, I'm not going to sacrifice even standard. To, or, I'm not going to sacrifice quality just because it costs money. Like It costs us some money to get it done, and then I'm like, okay. It's more, I, I treat it now that the first design that a concept artist do, does is a test. And if they do a good job, then I'll keep hiring them. And so I have that. Um, and I just hired two more people. They're the ones I'm most excited for for concept art because their, their illustration is awesome. They haven't started yet, but one of them is going to do a reclaimer, basic, the basic exosuit of a reclaimer. So the suit that they use to be able to walk around on Earth and the regular gravity when their body's not accustomed to it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that because this guy is a fantastic artist. He's probably one of, the most, um, the, one of them that I'm most excited about. And then this other guy... I'm going to be getting him to do um, the corporation because we need them developed. We need that. We need, and it's going to be hard to get a good look for them because it's it's easy just to fall back to your cliche post-apocalyptic looks, where you know they're just wearing leather and a, an over like a an overcoat kind of thing, yeah. and there you're done. Like that's fine, but I want them to have some sort of unique look. But that's but if we go to unique, then you got to make sure that it still looks realistic and that it fits into the environment as well. Like this is something that they didn't make themselves that they found or that was passed down. So they've got to have that kind of feel of it's not brand new. Although it's not like there's no manufacturing at this point. People can still make basic clothing. But who knows? So I'm going to have him be doing that because I looked through his portfolio on DeviantArt and he's just fantastic at doing people. And he's done some alien stuff in there too, but he's done a ton of people stuff and it's all, it all looks great. So I look forward to working with him. He's a little more expensive than the other ones, but I think it'll be worth it. And then I have one more that I'm about to hire, so a third, another one on top of the two that I just said, that um, he, I found him on DeviantArt because I was searching for robot designs and I came across this design that I just loved. But it didn't look like a robot. It looked like an alien inside of a suit. And I looked at that and I said, that's what I want the Xlanthos to be based on. And so I actually gave that piece of art to the concept artist and said, here's a good idea. Obviously, don't copy it. we got to modify it. Not just because of copyright issues, but because it's not quite what I want. And so I actually contacted the guy that made that, and I said, do you do freelance work? And he said, yes. And he gave me some prices. And I said, sounds great. I'm, I'll hire you. And I just emailed him today, actually. And so I gave him my email address, and he's going to be emailing me, and I'm going to get him working on uh, what I'm actually going to do. A couple things. One, I'm going to get him on the, the, the Zlanthos kind of work team, working with the other guy as well, so the two of them can work together and get something made. Or maybe I'll have him work independently and then I can choose between the two concepts. Hmm. Other thing is, I'm going to probably try to buy that concept art off of him, the one that I love so much, and say, is this for anything? Because I don't think it's, I think it's just something he made for fun. But it looks awesome. And I'll say, is this, is this for anything, or is this your own creation? Because if it's your own creation, I want to buy the rights to it. And then I want you to modify it to fit the Xlanthos that we create. And if that works out, I think we're going to have the coolest looking alien race. Um, that, that, that could, be, could be possibly made for dark potential. And so I'm pretty excited. So I got these, the, the two artists that I'm most excited for are working on the Reclaimers and the Zelantos. And then we got somebody working on the Salvagers right now.